Hi guys, I hope you are doing great and in this video, I am going to be discussing about aggregate demand. Now, aggregate demand measures the total spending or the total expenditures in the economy. You can call it as total demand as well, but then that total demand is measured or when we, when we talk about total demand, what we are trying to say is that we are measuring the total expenditures or the total spending that has taken place in the economy. And when you say that it comprises of the total spending, then who is spending money in the economy or who is doing that spending? We need to see that as well. So basically that spending is or the expenditures is coming from various sources such as number one, the spending by consumers that is in the form of consumer expenditure on their needs and wants, right? Then you have investments, uh, spending in the form of investments that is by firms on machinery and capital goods and equipment and expanding their factories, buying more raw material, you know? And then you have spending that is done by the state or the government in the form of government expenditure, be it the current expenditures or be it the capital expenditures. And then you have spending that is taking place in the form of net exports. That is the amount of expenditures that is done by foreign uh, residents on our domestic goods in the form of exports minus um, the expenditures that is done on imported goods by our domestic consumers or domestic firms, right? And we actually deduct these imports from our exports to actually arrive at our net exports, right? So what is aggregate demand? Aggregate demand is measuring your spending or your expenditures that, that is taking place in the economy. And if either of consumer spending, either investments or government expenditure or our net exports increases, right? So if either of these uh, components or uh, expenditures from either of these sources, if they increase, that will result into an increase in your aggregate demand that will cause a shift, a rightward shift, an outward shift in our aggregate demand curve. Now, as far as our aggregate demand curve is concerned, I'm going to be discussing and breaking down the aggregate demand curve and why does it slope downwards in my uh, next video. But in this video, this is just a brief introduction of what aggregate demand is. So, so guys, aggregate demand would rise and fall due to any change in a, uh, any of the above uh, components like a C rises or I rises or net exports would rise, right? And remember that whenever your aggregate demand will rise, that will cause economic growth. What, now, what is economic growth? Economic growth simply means increase in GDP. But what kind of economic growth will occur if aggregate demand rises? You need to be very careful and mindful of that too as well because that would result into actual growth. Now, what is actual growth? Actual growth means that your GDP is rising or there's economic growth taking place but that happens because of the utilization of existing capacity, of existing spare capacity of resources that have, been, that have been lying idle and are existing in the economy that have not been previously utilized. So if our firms, if the economy would utilize those resources and actually increase our GDP, increase the amount and value of goods and services that is being produced in the economy, that kind of economic growth would be known as uh, actual growth. And in fact, it's very important for economists to actually know that whether this growth is actual growth or the other kind of growth is potential growth because we need to, we need to you know, differentiate between these two growth so that we know that, okay, fine, this growth has resulted into a rise in productive capacity and this growth has been because of an increase or utilization of our existing resource. So now what is potential and what is actual growth? I've covered that in quite detail in my aggregate supply videos. You guys can check it out. It's in my uh, list of videos on my channel, right? So over here, you can see that actual growth is taking place. There's a movement from, from inside the curve, let's say from X to, let's say, point Y. So we, as we are moving closer to the curve, as this, we are moving closer to the curve, from let's say point X to Y and then from Y to Z, where more and more of the existing resources are being utilized and that results into actual growth. But then again, you must also know that we are moving from let's say point X to point Y, then from point Y to Z, you know, because there is a rise in aggregate demand. So this movement from inside the curve to on the curve or closer to the curve, or you can say closer to full employment because at point Z would represent that all resources are fully employed this arises because of a rise in aggregate demand, right? So full employment would occur because AD is rising. So basically, whether our resources will be fully utilized or whether our resources will be underutilized would actually depend upon the level of aggregate demand in the economy. And by that, what I actually mean is that it depends upon the, you know, the amount of total spending and expenditure that is taking place as compared to maybe last year or previous months. Because the more or the more the extent of that spending, the more the expenditures taking place or the more the extent of our uh, consumer expenditures, the government expenditures or net exports and investments taking place, the more would be the rate at which actual growth takes place and the closer or the quicker we will arrive at the full employment level of output. Okay, so 
again we can show this on a aggregate demand and supply diagram now here i have drawn a keynesian aggregate supply curve a keynesian long run aggregate supply curve although i'm going to be discussing again this diagram in some future videos because right now it's not the purpose for this video but yeah according to the keynesian school of thought the 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 keynesian said that our aggregate uh, sorry our aggregate supply our long run aggregate supply is basically perfectly inelastic in the long run that is it would be a vertical straight line and that would represent that you know um, once our resources have been fully employed so once this point has been reached after that you know it just slopes straight vertically upwards that kind of shows that you know even if you increase or keep on increasing your aggregate demand there's there'll be no zero change in your in your uh, real gdp or your national income that is there will be no change in actual amount of goods and services produced since all resources have been fully employed at this point let's say and this point th this point i'm labeling it as point z because this is corresponding to this point z on the macro ppc curve as well however the keynesian said that in the short run our aggregate supply curve is uh, perfectly elastic which means that whenever a situation like this would occur that you know whenever you have idle capacity or whenever you have existing resources prevalent in the economy so you know those resources can actually be used to produce goods and services and the economy would be able to respond react to that uh, increase in aggregate demand that is taking place let's say from ad1 to let's say ad2 and then from ad2 to ad3 what's actually happening is that you can see that your real gdp is rising let's say from y1 to let's say y2 and then from y2 to yf which is representing the full employment level of national income and this increase in national income is arising because resources have not been utilized there is spare capacity available in the economy and that aggregate demand is utilizing that spending taking place and expenditures taking place in these forms these are actually utilizing that existing capacity that is available hence representing a movement along the aggregate supply curve has hence extending our ag aggregate supply curve causing an extension in the aggregate supply curve resulting into a rise in real gdp however that extension would actually stop and not happen once the long run aggregate supply curve uh, becomes perfectly inelastic in the long run representing um utilization of full capacity has come to a standstill which means that you know there's no more resources available in the economy which again represents full employment so this is kind of representing uh full employment level of uh, your national income yeah so that's about it but again like a brief overview i would also want to cover in this video however i'm going to be covering the components in some other video in quite detail but again just a brief overview that consumer spending is referring to the amount of total spending that is taking place by consumers and that would maybe maybe rise because of an increase in incomes in the economy rise in maybe average incomes of you know incomes per head or maybe consumers are quite optimistic about uh, the the future uh, about the economy that you know they 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 think that the jobs are secure so they would spend more money as compared to saving that money so again investments may rise because of a fall in let's say because of a fall in interest rates however a fall in interest rate would actually increase consumer spending as well because when interest rates become low uh, so that results into fall in cost of borrowing and that makes borrowing cheaper so there's more borrowing by consumers and by firms so they would invest more in buying machinery and equipment and expanding their factories and buying more raw material you know so that again would actually increase investments and investments would increase aggregate demand but again you guys need to also understand that investments over here from the perspective of ad is not investment that we use in our generic sense like investment in stocks or let's say we we usually say investment is being done let's say i invested in buying property i invested in buying shares i invested in some car but that is not what investment over here means when we talk about aggregate demand right neither it means that we are investing in bonds over here from the perspective of economics and especially when we're talking about aggregate demand what we mean is that investment done by firms in capital stock investment done by firms in capital goods that is investment in machinery and equipment and expanding their factories that is investment that is taking place in your capital goods investment that is taking place in your in buying more raw material investment that is taking place in expanding your output in terms of buying more machinery that enhances your ability to produce you know more output utilizing your existing resources obviously so that results into an increase in your ad and that is also part of your investments and then again state would spend or the government would spend uh, that includes invest uh, sorry that includes government spending on your current expenditures and that includes government spending on your capital expenditures as well and current expenditures are your day to day expenditures that is done by uh, by the state such as 
the, the wages of your employees of the government that are working for the government. But then we also have capital expenditures that the government does, that such as, let's say, investment in infrastructure, investment in uh, education, healthcare, technology, tourism, um, you know, all these training and improving the productivity of labor, all these kind of uh, investment that the government does is is boosting the the uh, you know is increasing aggregate demand that creates um, uh, actual growth and hence that results into a rise in GDP and then we have expenditure that is in the form of net exports right that is whatever exports that are taking place netted off or deducted from the amount of imports that the domestic economy is doing on foreign goods right so again exports may rise or maybe imports may fall because domestic goods have become competitive maybe because price level is falling or the inflation falls that makes our domestic goods competitive creating or resulting into a rise in exports or maybe or maybe the currency has depreciated because a depreciation in the currency or a fall in the value of the currency against the other currency would make our imports uh, expensive and would make our exports cheaper hence resulting into a rise in a rise in net exports right so again maybe that could be a situation that is causing a rise in ad so Whatever the case is, just remember that aggregate demand measures total spending or total expenditure in the economy. Just don't write in your AS exam or your A2 exam that aggregate demand is equals to total demand and aggregate the formula for aggregate demand is AD equals to C plus. This is not a formula. Just don't consider this as a formula. It's just a component or, or sources from which the spending is being derived, right? That's about it. I hope you enjoyed the video and you understood it as well. And I'm going to see you all in the next video. Till then, take care.